Hello everyone. This is an ArcGIS tutorial to show you how to use the print layout as well as how to design your map for uh, printing uses as well as exporting your map as a digital file. The data that I will use for this tutorial is an Albert's projection map of the state of Florida displaying the counties as well as a point shape file showing the biomedical uh, waste facilities from November 2011. So now let's go ahead and look at our map just normally under print preview. As you can see my map only has the uh, two shape files and nothing else. But let's go ahead and start experimenting. Let's go ahead and change the format of, or should I say the orientation of our paper. So we'll go here to page and print step and choose landscape. Hit OK. Huh. It looks like nothing happened. Well, in reality, something did happen. Our page format was actually changed now to uh, landscape. So now the next time that we go to print preview, it will actually show um, exactly as we see here in the print option with, the, with our data being positioned uh, vertically on a horizontal piece of paper. Now, in order to actually really truly customize our print layout, we need to go to the view option and choose layout view. Now, once we choose layout view, as you notice, a new toolbar has appeared to us, the layout toolbar. So I'll go ahead and move this up to the top of my screen, and then I will briefly hover my cursor so you can actually see what the commands uh, do. You can think of the layout view as kind of like a customizable print preview option, where we have access to adding new map elements, we can resize our map, we can even uh, set guidelines on the rulers here to automatically have our lines snap to a particular location and many many other features. For now though I'll move my map over to the right. Now if I were to click on the rule here as you notice a little arrow appeared along with a uh, light blue line. This is a guideline as I just mentioned a few seconds ago. Guidelines you can think of them as snap lines meaning that if you want to uh, accurately place a line on a specific uh, measurement of length, you can do that. As you can see, it automatically snapped to the line that I chose here from the top vertical line. Now, just a heads up, uh, you can set multiple guidelines. You can also remove them by clicking on the arrow and dragging them off and dragging them off the ruler, or you can right-click on it and choose clear guides, which then makes all the current ones on that ruler disappear. All right, so far our map right now is missing quite a few elements actually. It's missing a title, a scale bar, a legend. So let's go ahead and actually move the map down a little bit, make room for a title. Now before I add the title, I need to explain the zooming uh, protocols for the layout view. As you see here, if you use the normal zoom in, zoom out, or full extent uh, options, this will actually affect your map's active data frame, meaning that you can interact with it just as if you were looking at it through the data view. On the other hand, if you want to, say, zoom in on the piece of paper itself and just see how your map would look up close, if you were to print it out, you could then use the layout zoom options uh, from the layout toolbar. Now, a cool feature here is that this is also available in the data view, is that you can change the data frame properties, meaning that you could give it a border, a background, and a few other features too. So for this case, I don't want to have the border of the map displayed, so I'll go ahead and remove that by changing the outline color to none. Now say for example that you're happy with your map and you have uh, plans to use other additional software packages to edit your map or to display it such as like PowerPoint or Photoshop. You can actually export the current map as, an, as a uh, digital file. And as you can see here from the drop down list we have many different options. Uh, to access the export feature you go to file and then choose uh, export. For now, though, I'll go ahead and choose PDF. Uh, for each option, though, they give you the uh, ability to change the resolution of the picture as well as change the width and height of the final product itself. The resolution used for most of these files is actually displayed in terms of DPI or dots per inch. Simply put, the higher the uh, dots per inch number, the larger the width and height of the file, but it also means that the file's uh, clarity 
will be much greater. However, that also uh, means that the file size will be larger. All right, I'll go ahead and name my new PDF file. Now this is very, very, very important. Be sure to save your file within a folder uh, that you have access to. Typically, if you do not select a folder, or if ArcGIS does not remember the last folder that you selected to save a file, it may save it within the ArcGIS directory. So you might have to do some digging around in your hard drive just to find that one file. So definitely save yourself the time and trouble and save it in the folder that you want to use for the current project. Alright, and as you can see, the map was successfully exported as a PDF file. Now, let's go ahead and export this map again, but this time, let's export it as a JPEG file. Uh, for resolution purposes, we'll keep it at 96, which is the typical default for exporting uh, the map in ArcGIS. Alright, we'll go ahead and click Save. Uh, just again, showing you the resolution is at 96. Click Save. Let me pull up the map. And here is our brand new JPEG file with our 96 dot parents resolution map. Now, let's go ahead and actually use some of the uh, creative features in ArcGIS to actually create ourselves the tile, scale bar, and all the other uh, map features that we can. So for now, let's go ahead and turn the border back on, put it as a sim simply a black color. All right, let me go ahead and move the map up just a tad. There we go. Now to add all these sort of uh, unique map elements, we go to the insert menu. As you can see, aside from inserting another data frame, which could uh, potentially have more information, we can have ourselves display a tile, simple text, a neat line, which is essentially a border, legend, north bar, excuse me, uh, north arrow scale bar, scale text, and a few other things too. Let's go ahead and give our this map a nice little title. Uh, using the text option, you can also give this uh, map a subtitle as well, or if you want to display additional text on your map to explain a feature or two, you can most certainly do that. Now just as another side note, ArcMap offers a multitude of customization options for virtually every every map element available. So you could actually spend a great deal of time just uh, trying out different uh, visualization techniques to see if your map um, is very appealing or if it actually project or if it actually explains the data well. But for now though, let's go ahead and add ourselves a north arrow. As you can see, there are a bunch of different Esri options that we can choose from. Again, we can also customize our own North Arrow if we so desire. But I feel as though we should probably pick, uh, let's pick a simple North Arrow. We choose a hit OK, and now our arrow will appear. So let's go ahead and put that in the top right corner of the map. Let me shrink it down so it's a little smaller. Put it right there. All right, the next map element that we're going to add is a legend. Now, once you actually click on the legend uh, option from the insert menu, it will bring up this little legend wizard. From here, you are then able to customize what sort of layers that you want displayed uh, for your legend. You can, also, you can also customize the legend title, as well as customize its border, its background color, uh, whether, or not how, whether or not if you want to have a large gap or distance between your icon and your text. There really is a bunch of cool options that uh, that you can pick from. Uh, for the purposes here, I'll use a simple border. Click Next, Next, and when we're ready, we'll click Finish. And here is our brand new legend. So for now, I'll put this right here. Um, I'll definitely be sure to adjust it later. But for right now, I really want to add my uh, few remaining map elements. Next on my list is the scale bar. Once you've chosen the scale bar menu option, it opens up this little dialog box that gives you um, a bunch of different designs for the scale bar itself. Uh, again, all are customizable. For now though, I'll go ahead and choose the, num the first option which typically has the scale bar tip marks up. By right clicking on the scale bar and choosing properties, you can then actually uh, edit how your scale bar uh, appear, such as changing the number of tip marks and even changing the uh, amount of units that are being displayed. 
as you can see there are a bunch of different options uh, for the time being though, I'll keep it in miles and I, and I think I'll go ahead and play around with the uh, different number of tick marks until I find something that will be appropriate for this map let's see I think that should be good enough alright now also a cool little feature to note is that if you uh, click and drag the scale bar around or if you like adjust the size of it the scale bar itself will also change in its units to help reflect the new length of it alright next and I think my last map element I'll add is a neat line which essentially is a border uh, I'll have it placed around all the elements with I think a light blue background let's go ahead and OK alright well I like the idea of having around all the elements except that it looks a little off place so let me go ahead and change that so it only uh, covers my map data frame legend and scale bar I want to make sure that the tile and north arrow are not obstructed by the light blue uh, color background so now I think our map is finally ready to be exported uh, I'm actually going to export this as a how about a PNG file uh, for now I'll keep the re resolution at 96 dpi however I will also export this map again but with a re resolution of 300 dpi and then what I'll do is I'll compare the two just so you can see the difference in quality as well as the difference in file sizes Let me go ahead and now export it again. Save it again. Resolution 300. And my width and height also change accordingly. Click Save. Alright, let me go ahead and pull up the two new images. As you can see here, they're both here. The smaller file size is the 96 dpi, which as you can see here. And it looks like it did uh, export correctly. Let me go ahead and look at the much larger file size. It may not be it may be difficult to notice at first, but if you were to zoom in, you would definitely see a difference in terms of um, line clarity as well as dot clarity. Alright, this concludes this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching.